Uh, hello, I can't. I'm, I'm trying to get the. Now I'm just kind of like deflated at that for some reason. I don't know why. Oh, there is a dog. Is it because you went wolf wolf? Yeah, he heard me. Nice. Hello this and welcome, special guest, to another episode of Space Time Taco. I'm your host, Chris, with Dave. And no, Nate. Uh, he is lost in the labyrinth. In the ether. He'll be back. The ether labyrinth. Um, it's fighting goblins. Yeah, is it good against goblins? Does it? What's his I mean, armor class? I think he can take a couple of goblins. <sighs> anyway, hey Dave, how you been? How you doing? What's going on? Uh, I'm pretty good. Yeah, I've been better, but yeah, haven't we all? Another That's what day, happens another dollar. When we're halfway through our thirties. Yep, I'm in my late twenties. I'm thirty-five. <laughs> oh God! I stand by that. Yeah. You know, it's closer to 3,000 than 1,900. Yeah. What? <laughs> Don't think about it. No, it's not. Is it? No, it's not. It's not. It's a, mass, it's a bad mess. <laughs> I'm like, wait, I don't know. It's math. like a thousand Is years right? further, further away than yeah. Yeah, I'm like, I'm oh, it's closer to three thousand than it was to the dinosaurs. How about that? Twenty twenty four minus nineteen hundred. It's not. One hundred twenty four. Yeah, okay, it's definitely not three thousand. Like thousand versus a hundred. Yeah, just fucking around. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, nine hundred and seventy six years. Oh, rest in peace, Yoda. He's not. Wait, how old? Wait, oh yeah, Yoda is dead. Like, he was like 700, I think. The doctor's older. How old was Yoda? No. <laughs> he was 872. My guess is 700. Oh, he was 900, wow. Damn. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's 900 years old, so yeah, duh. What? <sighs> Nothing, it's it's like a quote he says. Yeah, he even says how old he is. Mmm. Mmm. Um... Okay. Well, whatever. We can talk about Google searching later. Um, anyway, Ooh. hey, what you been up to? You have been playing anything? You have been watching anything? Um, I've been playing games. I've been watching anime um, after our last discussion. Oh, that's right. Um, you have fallen, I'm, I'm assuming since you've been flying through it, fallen in love with Jujutsu Kaisen? Um, I'm on season two of Jujutsu Kaisen. I haven't watched the movie yet. I started it. I'm going to kick um, your fucking ass. I told you to watch it before. I haven't watched all of the season two yet. Like, I haven't watched, like, yeah, more than I one episode. Watch, uh, it's just a movie. It's an hour and a half All right, I watched long. the movie. Yeah, but last time I tried to watch it, I fell asleep. It's hot out. It's, like, 90 degrees in the middle of the day for no reason. D all it's... that makes me want to do is sleep. <laughs> but, um... Tish. And then I'm up all night because it's cool at night. Um, <laughs> but, uh, no, Jujutsu Kaisen's great. Um... Actually, it's the latest episode of Kaiju come out. I gotta grab that. Yeah. Um, I also grabbed the Chainsaw Man, uh, Free Rin, which we talked about like two podcasts ago that I still haven't watched, uh, and three seasons of Rising of the Shield Hero. There are no three seasons. So, Damn, I stopped watching and read it, and then I kind of fell off of reading it because that's one of those shows that I really enjoyed the first season. So I'm like, okay, it's gonna be a while until they do another. Yeah, season. Yeah, I remember watching the first season. I'll, I'll have to rewatch it at this point, but I remember yeah. like. The guy like gets called out for being like a pervert, basically like the whole island, the whole the, the whole uh, kingdom or whatever. Song, what's yeah. Kingdom, yeah. I almost said what, what they are. The whole uh, universe is like mad at him, and then he kind of like works his way up from the bottom. He meets this like slave girl and like frees her. Yeah. Oh, believe and, me, they, uh, Nate and I have had multiple conversations of how uh, one of the biggest issues, and it's not just Shield Hero. It is uh, Isekai in general. Uh, has this infatuation with morally okay slavery. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, Shield Hero being one of the worst ones, where it's like, hey, if you become my slave, you level up and get more powerful faster. I'm like, that's fucked That's a party up. member. Why not just say uh, party <laughs> member? Why not just say party <laughs> member? Why I gotta say slave? Courtesan. Exactly. Why? <laughs> um, yeah, that, that I think... It, it's the point where... At, it's at, almost like they're doing it on purpose. Like, they're trying yeah. to be... Yeah, uh, I mean, at one point in the series, a bunch of people that are just, like... I think he has saved through events of one of the seasons. Yep. At a point, they're all like, 
we all want to be more powerful. Let us become your slaves. I'm like, mm, no. <laughs> let's yeah, let's call it something else, like party That's, members. Exactly. Um, we create that. Yeah. No. But yeah, I do have a bunch of anime on my plate. I've been watching. Uh, I watched season finale of Survivor this week, which I know nobody cares about, but I love Survivor. Who won? Um, uh, this girl won who was, uh, she was on basically like the worst tribe in almost Survivor history. Like they went oh, wow. 10 days without without fire. So in the beginning of the game, just for people who don't know Survivor, they start off like 18 people, three teams of six. And they do challenges like every day. And then whoever's team gets for third place in the challenges in the beginning they have to send somebody home. That's the tribal council at the end of the night. So they start with six, and then, you know, if you lose, you're down to five. You lose, you're down to four. But then, say, a different team loses. Then the team of four is good for another day, and then a different team of six has tribal council, and then one of them goes home. So that's how it works. Until they get down to about 12 people, and then they split into two tribes, like A and B, six and six. But then that can, like, fuck up alliances, because if you were, like, really tight with somebody in your first group, when they shuffle, you literally just draw colored rocks out of a bag, and your rock color is your, your new team. So you might wind up on a team with people you've never met before. You know, you've been playing mm -hmm. with your squad for an entire week, and then all of a sudden the game just flips on its head for you. Yeah, I get the main gist of it because I watched uh, Survive Block Island, which is definitely a, solely, a wholly original thing, and it was not their Minecraft own Minecraft mod based on Survivor. Yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> But Kinsey, who was, uh, like, one of the weaker women on the tribe, that they, they were so bad they didn't have fire for 10 days. They are only on the island for 28 days. So a third of the time, they, she did not have fire. <laughs> Jesus. So, like, they can't cook rice. Like, they're just eating, like, papayas and whatever they can find. But, um... Ooh, papayas. She was on the bottom. Somehow managed to survive through the merge, and then actually made it to the end um, and won. So, it was cool. Hmm. She basically said that, like... You know, that she's, like, uh, she owns, like, a hair studio, and that she's, like, she makes it, admits, like, that she runs it, and, and it's a shitty business, she doesn't run it to make money, like, she's, like, if a business professional saw the way I ran things, like, they'd be, like, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, she's, like, but I run it because, like, I had no job, yeah. I basically was, like, 15, living on my own, taking care of myself, and then this is what I fell into, and now she did, runs it to help other people, so when they asked her point blank, like, during the voting process at the end, when they pick who wins, the people who get cast off pick the winner, they're like, you know, what would you do with the money? And somebody's like, oh, I donated it to a nonprofit. Or you know, one woman's like, I'm a millionaire. I don't really need the money, but I do this, this, and this with it. And she didn't get any votes. Um, <laughs> and then Kinsey's like, I'm going to start a family and use it on myself because I've never had money. Yeah. And then the day of the season finale, which was Wednesday, she now she was pregnant. So that's cool. Yeah, I actually just looked into her and I saw the post of her being uh, very pregnant. Um, yeah. Because yep. <laughs> obviously yeah. Survivor happened. It has been they have done. Like, they have, right. like, NDAs. I don't yeah. think they can talk about it until the show airs. That's a so lot of, a, a have, lot of those kind of things. She might have been pregnant for, like, three months and just couldn't talk about it. I think, like, one, some of the few uh, ones that I know don't have to worry about, I think. Same thing with, like, think. Jeopardy. Most game shows, yeah. you know, you, you can't talk about it until it airs. Yeah. I Which, would still you know, tell. Yeah. I would tell, like, my close friends. I would tell y'all. Oh, yeah, we would know. We would definitely know. Uh, even if you didn't tell you, we would know. You know. But yeah, it's Survivor. Uh, I know there's going to be a long break now because they only do two seasons a year, so it's going to be like three or four months before the next one. So I cancel my Paramount Plus because I'm not <laughs> going to continue to pay for. Why you could be watching all of Psych from beginning to end? I have that on a removable hard drive that you gave me four <laughs> years ago. I don't think it's well. There are three movies. Yeah, I don't have that. Yeah. Oh, didn't didn't was that one actor finally passed away? Uh, he did not. He he, he did um, not. Oh, good. I was going to say he had a very I know, bad it was like touch stroke. And go. Um, Stroke and like he, a cancer diagnosis? Oh, I don't remember what. I, all, all I know is that he ended up coming back because he wasn't in the first movie because it was pretty recently around the stroke. Uh, he came right. back for the second movie, which is really early in his recovery, or like in his stable. Oh wow! Yeah, uh, he the, is uh, a big Omerson. part. He's a big part of the third movie. Um, That's what's up. Yeah. It was it was one of those really nice. Kim and I actually, I didn't put this on here. Uh, we just watched the other night. We watched. Uh, the third psych movie, which is called This Is Gus. This Is Gus. Uh, it's great. I highly recommend it. It's just as weird um, and a little this bit more Gus. out there than um, some of the other psych episodes in movies, but yeah, it was good. Oh, I because did. he was on This Is Us. Yeah. Timothy Edmondson was on This Is Us. That's funny. Um, what else are we doing? Yeah. So you've been watching He was in Jerry. an episode of Percy, Percy Jackson as well, so. 
Was the new a, one. Oh, he was. I forgot about that. Um, I haven't watched it. I highly recommend it. It is really good. I'm watching anime right now, can't watch. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a, don't worry about it. It's only one season. Once the second season starts, then I'll be like, okay, now catch up so we can watch this one. Um, I did rewatch some movies, some of my favorite movies this week. I was just itching. Um, I got some bad news, family news. My unfortunately, one of my last remaining grandparents has a terminal illness. So kind of been a little bummer mood not to bring things down but just to explain where my head's been at so mm-hmm. i watch some of my favorite movies cause that's usually what i do when i'm feeling feeling blue yeah i watch movies that i love so i watched like the martin which I, I, that movie i don't know why like it just gets me like the, I, don't, I know it's based on a book i assume it's the writer it's a really good book or a really good book uh andy weir i highly recommend it andy weir is actually the person that wrote the short story the egg um, which yeah. is basically that short story of a guy who dies and has a conversation with basically God, and it's God cons- telling him that he has been sending him back and reliving through every life on Earth kind of thing. Uh, big, like, philosophical thingy. Um, Same guy wrote Martian. Yeah, he wrote The Martian. He has two more books that came out. One has been option for Weir. a movie, I believe. Uh I, I actually read the book before seeing the movie, and I, I, I think they did a really good job with the movie. Um, yeah, I really like the film. Um, it's a little iffy at the end, because even like if you understand like what's happening, it's like mm-hmm. it basically like strap him in a spacesuit to like a hunk of metal with a jet attached to it, and yep. then have to like catch him in space. Like it's it's a lot of, but it's still a great movie. It's a science fiction. It is a semi-serious science fiction. <laughs> it's kind of a horror movie for me. Oh, I yeah. watch it as a horror movie because it's like you're alone by yourself on a planet like where nothing grows, and you have Except to for fucking potatoes. survive. And you you have nothing. Mm-hmm. Like there's there's literally nothing. And then like his airlock blows. Like oh god, all his fucking food gets destroyed. Yeah. But he like hustles and survives. And by the end of it, he's almost like a skeleton. Like they it's CG. It's not him, but it's it's. Yeah, it was a, and he's like a hush Christian of his Bale. former self. It, you basically like a Christian Bale transformation, right? And again, happy ending. He survives because of science, mm-hmm. which I, I don't know is probably a good takeaway there. I like that. Then the other movie I watched was uh, Edge of Tomorrow. Edge of Tomorrow with uh, Tom Cruise. Live, die, repeat. Yep. Emily Blunt. Live, die, repeat. Speaking. All you, all you need is kill. I'm glad you mentioned Emily Blunt because uh, one of the things that Kim and I literally just watched today. Was the Fall Guy? Oh, what'd you think? Oh my God, I loved it. Um, I think I ripped that, but I don't know if it's a cam or not, so I have to check the quality. Yeah, so it is available digitally now to rent or own. Uh, being weird, huh? Not you, him. Oh well, Man, I, I, I'm like weird? I was kind of hinting at a thing. He's like licking too, the man. roof of his mouth. He's got something in his mouth. He's licking the roof of his mouth. I know. It's is there something weird. on the roof of his mouth? In. Dogs are weird. Um, yeah, really liked it. Uh, you have you said you haven't watched it yet, right? No. Um, it it gives me. It didn't do well at the box office. That's it's so upsetting too, because I mean, it's already like I said, it's already out digitally. They literally were like, "All right, here's like a month, maybe two weeks in." Yeah, theaters. that's crazy. It was just out. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it makes me think a lot of, especially Ryan uh, Gosling. Oh, the other thing I downloaded was Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. Sorry. Ooh, yeah, okay, enjoy that one. Um, it's very much uh, the good guys, right? Hold on. Yeah, the other guys, the good guys? No, no, the good guys. Is it the good guys? No, hold on. Fuck. I always forget which one it's called. Nice guys, the nice guys. Oh, kick asses in this. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so the nice guys, that's the one where it's like in the 70s. Yeah, and it's I, I have the digital. The digital Russell Crowe. Um, it it gives me that kind of those kind of vibes. The nice guys, yeah. Um, which I fucking love those movies. Uh, it's actually made by, I believe, directed by the same guy that did Bullet Train, which I've still not watched yet. I haven't seen that um, either, and I've heard good things. Yeah, so I'm I'm expecting to hopefully enjoy that too. Uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson's in that one too, oddly enough. Um, Dude gets around. Yeah, I mean he <sighs> doesn't sign multi movie Marvel deals, but he gets around. <laughs> No, he does not. He does not sign up. He, you, hey, I mean, he's in another Marvel movie this year. Do you know what? Ah, uh, no, nah, this is a cam. This is uh, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. This oh. is gone. Uh, <laughs> sorry. What other Marvel movies? Uh, he's he's Craven. Oh right, the Sony movie. <laughs> we count those technically. Um, 
Yes. Oh, I know why. I I also remember just now. Sorry to interrupt you again. Why I stopped watching Jujutsu Kaisen Zero is because of the rip that I had was bad and oh. like artifacts all over it and like a third of the way through the movie. It was, like, I will give you out. my Crunchyroll login and just watch yeah, it on good. the website. I got it. I got it. I got a fresh rip right here. <laughs> okay, fine. Um, Boy, kill the world. Is this cam? What is this? Watch this. Uh, oh yeah, let me know if that one's cam too, because I may or may not have that as well. Nope, it's digital. It's a web rip. Sweet. Do I? Okay. Where did I put that? Is that not here anymore? Sorry, I'm just sailing the seven seas mid podcast here. I, I can understand, but hey, you know we have, we uh, we talk about it. It's a thing. We're perfectly fine hey, with it. If they were better at you know making things accessible and not just shutting down digital marketplaces, and I would feel a lot more comfortable. Even well, that's, purchase that's why I tell people. Than, that's why I tell people. Uh, one of the most perfectly, two of the most perfectly fine to uh pirate pieces of media are uh 20, 28 days later and <laughs> uh dogma because there is currently no dogma, legal that, way print, to get of either of those they are not streaming they are not downloadable they are not purchasable uh, you cannot find it in any format legally right now unless it's through resale resellers and that is not a legitimate media source of media in my opinion I love them. It's been great. I missed the fuck out of Mega Media Exchange. Uh, <laughs> Throwback fucking all my, 20 years I ago. I sold all my, all my Blu-rays. Like, pretty much all of them. Yeah. The only thing I have left is... Uh, Steel cases? Chuck. Oh. No, those gone Ooh, too. You can sell this. Did you sell... Um, what's the uh, Tarantino? Yep. All the Tarantino movies, they're gone. Damn, because I know you had sold, Jackie Brown, I sold, right? I sold them as a collection. The Jackie Brown was a re-release. It wasn't the OG. Oh, uh, okay. There's an OG version. There's a re-release. The re-release has a... I'm such a movie nerd, but it has a Best <laughs> Picture 25th anniversary, something like yeah. that gold band across the top. <laughs> the original release, Blu-ray release, is out of print. Okay. Jackie um, Brown was a re-release, and now the re-release is out of print, so it's also still rare. Like, I'm not trying to say it's less rare, but it is than the OG. The OG Jackie Brown Blu-ray is hard to find. Yeah. Um, I think I sold all the Tarantino movies as a bundle for... Like seventy five bucks. That's not bad. It's not a bad deal. Yeah, the only Blu ray I'm gonna kick his ass. Literally the only Blu ray I have left is the Ravens Super Bowl run. Uh the Ravens Nerd. playoff run. Nerd. Blu ray collection. A thirty for thirty ESPN documentary about uh, the collection. About it's thirty <laughs> films. Yeah, about the it's Ravens. About sports. It's about sports. There is one about the Ravens in frame. And then uh Chuck. Chuck the complete series on Blu ray. Which is like a grill of mine. And I own that digitally. I say own that digitally, but I have that digitally as well. But I just, it's such a good show. I, I mean, I have. Favorite. I still have. You can't see it. I literally rewatched the decent finale of Chuck today. Because I wanted to hear Rivers and Roads. You could just pull that up. Never mind. Fall Guy. Great. Highly recommend it. Fantastic movie. Beginning to end. Really funny. Um, great cast. Uh, underutilized, um, they they very heavily under under underutilized Winston Duke. Uh, he needs to be in more things, please. Winston Duke is awesome. It's m- Mbappe, right? Yep. Um, he did a movie. I can't remember the name of it. Maybe you can. It was like a reincarnation thing where he was like interviewing like six or seven people, and he was like going through their lives. Does it make any sense? No. Okay, then you should probably watch this. Um, Winston, Winston Duke, Duke, IMDb. Nine days? Nine days, yes. Yeah. Watch that. Put that on your list. All right, we'll talk I about will. It next time. I was going to say, it there's already... It didn't get good reviews. It got a 6.8 for an IMDb. Jesus, this cast is fucking awesome, too. Yeah, Benedict Wong's in it. Uh, and Skarsgård's in it. Tony Hale, Bill Skarsgård. Right. Um, but basically, it's like purgatory without like giving away too much. And they don't okay. realize where they're at right away, but they figure it out pretty quickly. And he's interviewing nine people who recently died, and one of them gets a chance to be reborn. He has to pick. Oh, okay. From okay, the people he's interviewing. Okay. So, yeah. Um, Kim, Kim would probably like that, too. That sounds great. Them, I'll definitely throw that on our... Ooh, it's on HBO Max, and we have... Sorry, it's on Max. Max. Uh, fucking... Drop the HBO. Eat a Drop dick. the... 
The yeah, thing. drop the thing that they are known for and was <laughs> drop actually a your legacy, thing. Like, right? Not not a three letter. Uh, that's like if Disney thing. decided that their streaming service was plus. <laughs> yeah, no, it's called me. Jesus drop fucking the Christ! Um, they just knee knee plus. Yeah, Winston Duke is the main character in that, and then he is interviewing nine people for a chance at reincarnation. All right, it's cool. Like the good place, but different. I was gonna say it kind of makes me think of. Um, have you ever? It's an anime. Um, uh, fuck! What is that? Like your question. It's death it's parade. Really... Yeah, Death Parade. No, highly recommend it. It's very short. I think it's like a twelve episode kind of series. Um, really fucking good. It deals with death and rebirth, or not so much rebirth. A little. I think it plays with it a little bit, but uh, very much like. Uh, just, Reincarnation or something. I was gonna say just repercussions of your life, kind of thing. Um, right. Really good. Highly recommend it. Kind of fucked up in certain parts, but in a good way. Uh, uh, speaking of uh, anime, uh, I watched what may be one of the worst anime series I've ever watched. Oh, no. Uh, it's called Full Dive. Okay. So it's basically, you know, we've all watched a dot hack sign here or there. Um, That's the dot hack trading cards when I was oh cleaning up. Oh, God. I wonder how much they're worth. Don't, don't. I should, don't I'll do now. Um, basically, it is uh, this guy gets tricked into buying a ten-year-old uh, inc- super immersive VR game. Um, is it a video game isekai? It's not an isekai, only because he doesn't get trapped there. He has the option of leaving it, kind of thing. Gotcha. Um, but like Sword Art Online ish, kinda without the stupid pedophilia. Um, I do not remember that. But okay. Yeah, season two, the whole point is this old CEO guy wants to keep the high school girl trapped in his dungeon or whatever the fuck. I mean, gotta respect the hustle. No. Um, <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. I will, that is, that is getting kidding. cut. Full um, dive. <laughs> ultimate next gen full dive RPGs. Even ch- All right, than stop. Life? Stop. Stop. Let me let me just don't read about it. I'll just talk about it, and then you can never watch it. Um, is the word shitty in the title? Yes, it is. Basically, he has That's a shitty. Red, he a has a, a shitty real life, which he and he uses video games as his escape. He tries to go buy the new game in the series he loves, but this girl that works at the game store is like, "Nah, let me here. I'm, you give it to me, and I'll let you buy it for this much." And he ends ends up switching it or she switches around and makes him buy this shitty old vr game uh that like he it he feels the pain of things happening and all this bullshit like hyper realistic so oddly enough not die for real but if he is to die in the video game it destroys his console (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like it is a built-in thing to the game that if you die your Stop game destruct. system dies um and you know the way that the game works out is it starts off all happy and stuff and he's like all right i'm gonna go uh go do my mission and be the hero of the world uh and accidentally kills his uh in-world best friend and which immediately labels him as a murderer and then he's chased and he goes to torture all this bullshit uh it's just written horribly (laughs) and just there's nothing about it i'm so mad that i've watched as much of it as i had but it's mostly because i was watching it while playing other things so i just kind of let it go um it's just not good (laughs) like (laughs) i don't think there's a single redeeming quality um unless you only want to watch anime for uh characters or specific like waifu types and that's about it gotcha um yeah we're just looking at looking at reviews and yeah, it's mixed yeah yeah there's someone out there that probably thinks it's god's gift to earth yeah there's a bunch of fives yeah waiting for season two heart to heart but you know it came out three years ago so i doubt they're gonna do it yeah. <laughs> well you say that, 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 that some, ship is sailed. like log horizon i was amazed that it actually got a third season um log horizon yeah log horizon is more of a uh isekai where they get stuck in the game kind of thing which one is like the Minecraft guy where the guy basically just builds a Minecraft village in the middle of the woods? Which one? There's a bunch. Okay. Uh, so there's a bunch I've read. Um, 
fucking Minecraft isekai. May might as well just fucking get the Xbox. Might as well just let them get a. There's a, one a tie-in somewhere. There is one that the the the, the uh, fan sub they just call it Minecraft isekai. It isn't actually called Minecraft isekai, but they've decided that it's easier to just call it that. There's um, a dude, and he like gets reborn with like a tool. And the yeah, tool is, yeah. Like, so that and is like transform into anything. And then he farming, just basically builds, He literally like carves out a life. tree. He like carves out a, a village. And, like, people just start showing up and moving in. And then he's like, oh, I need access to water. And he, like, digs out a trough to go, to go get water. I watched a YouTube. Uh, what I found. Farming life there are these, in another world. I mean, like, there are these YouTube summaries, which I found in the last two, three weeks, where basically someone takes, like, an entire series and, like, dubs over it, more or less abridges it. And mm -hmm. it's, like, an hour or 90 minutes long. And usually it's an entire season of an anime. So I'll watch, like, 15 minutes of that. And then if I like it, I've added to my list. Uh, yeah, farming life in another world is basically uh, the guy. Yeah, guy gets re reborn, has this incredible like farming all all in one tool kind of thing. Yeah, it's um, like a hoe, a pickaxe, a sword. Yeah, everything. and it starts off where it's just him, and then he ends up uh, befriending these wolves and these wolf pups, and the wolves have kids, and they become part of his family. Uh, this giant spider becomes part of his family. They all work together, and eventually he has, like, a harem of, like, eight different waifus and a whole bunch of elf maids or bull whatever bullshit. Um, yeah, somebody did, like a, like I said, it's almost like a... Um abridged or like a, <laughs> like a spark notes version of a spark notes version where yeah basically they they let most of the important stuff play out but then mm -hmm. they like add commentary like speed things along and it's like an hour long usually but it's the entire season so it's like 25 yeah. episodes i think i've so seen one or two of those on like people put bits and pieces on tiktok gotcha yeah yeah the guy that does it i mean i imagine it takes a long time to edit something and do something like that and he's pretty funny too like he inserts little jokes and like you know like memes in there and uh yeah, that's what I'll do is I'll watch that. And I don't watch the entire thing, but if I like it uh, after like 10, 15 minutes, I'll stop it and then I'll add it to my list. Yeah. All right. And I've um, done that with like two shows so far. I just read a whole bunch of that shit. I just, that's when well, I, I put don't. A, I put that on in the background when I'm playing card games. Yeah. When I am having like just a, I want to not do anything kind of day, I will literally just sit and read shitty Isekai all day. Um, you need a haircut? Who, me or you? Uh, me, I just saw them. I got my no. widow's peak peeking out. <laughs> We're good. I don't know. Mine's looking a little long, too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, a little. Yeah. Uh, you look like Russell Crowe. I, I, the hair now. Ever. I'm getting the hair is now to Russell yeah, Crowe. Yeah. Fucking Russell Crowe cosplay. Um, so, yeah, Full Dive sucks. Go watch other or a better video game anime. Uh, ooh, I'm go watch fucking dive. Frontier... Fuck, what is that? Frontier anime. What is that thing called? Shangri-La Frontier. Go go watch Shangri-La Frontier. Maybe not you specifically. I, I but... am liking Jujutsu Kaisen and Kaiju, so I will definitely keep watching anime. It's like it's, uh, it's been a while. You've been off for anime so for a while now. I've <laughs> been off anime for a while. <laughs> like a drug addiction. Back on the back on the horse or back on the I'm rack. Back wagon. on the horse. Only two episodes a day. Only two episodes a day. No, um, <laughs> It's uh we're gonna get like him to watch One Piece, guys. <laughs> it's like splitting time. I'm never watching One Piece. <laughs> Will you? Okay, ignoring the I'll current. get a job before I watch One Piece. <laughs> Please get a job. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Will you? Ed, Ed we're people don't need jobs. Ignoring okay. ignoring uh the the original One Piece. Will you give the new remake where it's paced correctly and well and all that? Will you give that a shot? New remake. What you talking about? So, this was announced last year. One Piece is getting a new anime. He's, he's DBZ altering himself? It's kinda. It's basically... Um, Dragon Ball kai -ing Yeah, himself. Dragon Ball Kai. Uh, One Piece Kai. It's basically, hey, this is a show that has been running for Decades. almost 30 years. We're coming up on 30 years. Um, the old animation, it holds up for some people... For a lot of younger generations, it doesn't hold up. The pacing is absolute garbage. Yeah, um, I'll give it a try. The Kai. Yeah. I'll try okay. it. All right. And it's being made by, ooh, I believe it's the team that did Spy Family. Um, I watched season one of Spy Family, but it was like two years ago. But you remember it looking nice, right? <laughs> yeah. 
I don't know if he's going to do anime. Yeah, I'll look into that later. Whatever. Um, yeah, Jujutsu Kaisen has been great. I, I really yes, like it. Absolutely gorgeous. Fucking love everything about that. Uh, it is. I'm. Ugh. The manga is. It's Mahito's something a right motherfucker. Now. Mahito's a motherfucker. Yeah, fuck that man. little I bitch. I don't like that guy. And then the fucking plant guy just got fucking bodied by uh, Gojiro. I was going to say, you hit the, him with like the, one shot and blew his whole fucking arm off. The two person tag team with, um, I love the oh, clap man. fight. The was, clap fight. With, yes. Yeah. And then he's like, oh, and then he, he does it without clapping and he's like, he lied to me. <laughs> Mid fight. It's so fucking good. And then he switches with him. He's like, oh, it's not just you and another friendly. You can switch with your enemy. Yeah. Can switch yeah. with you. Um, that little tag team. <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite type of woman? I like a tall girl with a big ass. He's like, brother, remember when we were in middle school? He's like, I didn't go to school with you. <laughs> uh, I'm Such trying to think of other. Series. There's that. And then there's the Black Flash moment where he and Nobru, like at the same time, finish he, like, off. He like teaches the... him, teaches him Black Flash. Yeah. yeah. Um. Oh man, such a good, such a good season, such a good show. Can't wait yeah, like for you it, to be upset. It reminds me. It, it's it helps to be upset. It reminds me of Bleach. It reminds me a lot of Bleach. Yes, I and I think Bleach that might be why I ended up liking it as much as I did. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I I would put that as like this is that JJK is this this generation's Bleach. Bleach. Yeah. Uh, Black Clover is this generation's Naruto, and I will never stop saying that Black Clover is what Naruto tries to be. I haven't seen uh, Sakuna in a while, the demon. He shows up, like, and rips his heart out, but then he kind of goes away pretty much for the rest of the season. He's kind of in there. Yeah. He shows up once or twice, but he doesn't, like, come back out again. Yeah. Um, give it some time. Uh-huh. He's, he's the big bad, basically, in my head. He's basically, he's the big bad. Yeah. More or less. He's basically. the bad guy at the end of the road. Um, well, so as you have seen, since you watched the first, you said the first episode of season two... Maybe. Hold yeah. on, let me click through it. Yeah, the haunted house. Yes. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I remember the haunted house. Haunted house. Is that what it is? It does the second the second season starts off with different characters with uh, the what's her name from flashback. the uh, yeah okay wait. Right, I just yeah, don't. I just don't want to spoil anything for you. All right, then let's not talk about these. Yeah, things. okay, cool. Watch. I'm like, mm, I'm gonna shut up now. Um, just watch it because I started it. watching it. I got like halfway through the first episode, and then I texted y'all about the movie, and you were like, "Watch the movie." Oh, okay. All right, yeah. Just get back to it. Let us know. Uh, give us an update, and I won't. Spoil Season one anything. was good. Four out of five, easy. Yeah, I, I like when people are caught up on the anime because then I know where to stop talking about because I know where the anime finishes and I know where uh. the manga continues. <laughs> um, uh, the only other yeah. thing I've been really watching, Kim, it, like I think last time I, we had already watched the first two episodes, uh, there have been another two episodes of Doctor Who uh. since we recorded. Oh, of the new um, Who. Oh, you know, now I think about it, none of it because we haven't recorded in three weeks. So, so, yeah, yeah b- before our last podcast, there was no new, yeah, new, no um, new Who. So, we have watched four full episodes of Doctor Who for this new oh, season. Awesome. Um, I have been really enjoying it. I think Kim, for the most part, has really been enjoying it. Um, but this last episode, and I don't, I'm not going to spoil anything for it, highly recommend the season. Check it out. There's a little bit of Russell T. Davies bullshit that we have to I deal damn. with, but whatever. Um, yeah, you whited yourself out. Uh, yeah, I just got flashbangs. <laughs> um, this most recent episode, 73 Yards, was a really cool idea that I feel like was poorly handled and executed, um, which just kind of took me out of it and made me not enjoy it overall. I enjoyed it enough for it to be like, oh, this is in my head. I'm like, this will be the bad episode of the season because there's always the quote unquote bad episode of the season, um, hopefully. There's only one. There's only eight episodes, so we're halfway through. Um, but but they're just not always of the same quality. Yeah, I mean, like you, we there are episodes like Father's Day or uh, Love and Monsters or Love and Other Monsters, which two of the worst episodes. One of them by far the worst episode. Um, I hear Kim walking around. I'm like, is Kim gonna come give opinions? 
No. Come talk about Doctor Who. Uh, <laughs> come talk about Doctor Who. Um, but what's confusing and baffling to me right now is, from what I'm seeing on the internet, people yep. fucking loved this episode. Oh, and, and I'm like, one that you had, you had thought was you kind of a downer. Kidding me? <laughs> so it's it's the quote unquote horror episode of this season, and Russell T. Gotcha. Davies normally there's, doesn't. There's always like a an angel or a, that type um, of yeah, episode. a more a more like a scary ooh, quote, like kind that. of thing. Um, and it it starts off, and I'm like, ooh, this could go somewhere cool. I like the idea, and then it hits a point where I'm like, oh, I'm, it's losing me. And then as it continues on, I'm like, oh, I'm no. Nope. Mm -mm. <laughs> like i i guess when it gets to the ending i'm like yeah i guess that about tw uh halfway through this episode halfway through, yeah um but no i don't know it's it's okay uh so far i think out of all of it episode three which is boom um is probably my favorite episode uh which is also mm -hmm. oddly enough Stephen moffat's first return since he left as showrunner uh what feels like a fucking decade ago at this point um Actually, now I think about it. Hold on, it's not that long ago. When did Stephen Moffat did he leave after Matt Smith? Leave? No, he left after um, Capaldi. Gotcha. His last episode was in 2017. It has almost been a decade. What the fuck? <laughs> That's kind of crazy. That is. Um, I mean, Doctor Who came back. In t 2005. Uh, it was gone basically from 89. Uh, whoa, check that out. This is the very first thing that popped up. Let's go. What? Nothing. I was just trying to find it. Sometimes it's a pain in the ass. But... Oh. <laughs> um, Space Babies, The Devil's Cord, boom, 73 yards. 73 yards is the most recent episode. 73 yards is the most recent episode. Um, <laughs> so there is an episode before Space Babies uh, that is something about Ruby Rose. Um Ruby Road. Ruby Road, sorry. Uh, I don't remember the name of the title. But it, uh, there's... So the way th the new Doctor worked is there's three 60th anniversary specials in the third of the three. Um, and Shooty comes giggle? in. Yeah, the giggle is when Shooty comes in and uh, takes over. And then... So if I wanted to watch this season from the beginning, I should start with the giggle. Mm. Yeah. Part of me wants to tell you to watch all three 60th anniversary specials, okay. just just because it's Star Beast, three. Wild Blue Yonder, and then the Giggle. Yeah, only because it's three more Doctor Christmas Who episodes Christmas. with the Church on Ruby Road. The Church on Ruby Road. That is technically the first episode of Nshuti's Run, his gotcha. first takeover. It's it's confusing the way they did it. It's a new oh, yeah. new thing, and I'm okay with it. But like I was saying, they did the, like a they did like a mini season to like do a transition from Darkers. Yeah, because so it's it's uh, it was the 60th anniversary for Doctor Who. Um, they brought back David Tennant and Donna Noble, who are people some a lot of people's favorite characters. Um, Donna was the um, the uh, what you call it. I don't know Psychic. what the one called. Oh yeah, companion. One of the main, many there companions. Yeah, um, she's the one that in the episode you watched. Oh, from is... the office. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. <laughs> I should have thought about that. I like. I know that name rang a bell. Yeah, Catherine Tate. She is fucking great. Hilarious. Um. Yeah. Watch Doctor Who. You don't have much. You got eight. That's hey. That's what nine. No, eight. Eight episodes of Doctor Who you can watch, and you're already caught up. Um. Because basically, a good thing to look at is from his beginning on, you can kind of be like, all that stuff happened, but you don't have to watch it. It's kind of like when comics are like, and this is issue one again. <laughs> again. Yeah, you know. This is season one slash season 14 slash season 47 or something like that. Um, Black Doctor, is that a first? Yes. What's up? Yep, yep. Uh, he is like the third Scottish doctor, I think. Does he make a reference to being like the first black doctor? He I should. don't know. I don't remember. He should. That's okay. <laughs> uh, I, he's also, I think, the first. No, she was technically. Whatever. Uh, I'm going to move over to, to enough of what we're watching. There's lots of stuff. Go watch entertainment. 
Yay. <laughs> we're gonna stop talking about Doctor Who's that we're doing. Doctor No, yeah, we're done we're done with Doctor Who and we're moving over into video games just because I played some uh really fun indie shit the last couple of days or last couple of weeks. Um, watch Doctor Who. Yeah, watch Doctor Who. Um I'm gonna go with what I played the most versus what I played the or yeah, start with what I played the least. Lurst. Lurst the most. The most versus the lurst. Um Animal Well. Picked up Animal Well. Everyone knows Animal Well because it's Donkey's first published game under Big Mode. Um, right. They say Donkey's game a lot. It's not Donkey's game. Not Donkey's game. game. It's his Dunkey, published game. Donkey published. One, one dude. One dude did make this game. Yeah, it's a solo it's developer. not Donkey. It's, uh -huh. it's, it's insane. The whole game is 33 megabytes. Yeah. Uh, there are people there. I saw something that there's a dynamic theme on... Uh, PlayStation 5 that is larger than the game file. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Animal yeah, Well the, developer the is, of Animal well is like Billy Basso. Billy Basso. Billy Basso. Basso, Basso, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which is fucking amazing. The game is beautiful. Uh, I have not given it enough time. I only played maybe an hour or so fucking around exploring the world. Um, it is... Yeah, the PS5 version is over 100 megabytes. Most of that size can be attributed to a single high-resolution image used in <laughs> consoles UI. Um, yeah, there is... Uh, it, yeah, it is basically a non-combative, as in you don't fight directly, um, Metroidvania. It is a lot more heavy on the puzzle aspect. Um, yep. From yep. what I've heard, it seems to go from that Metroidvania feeling to a very different kind of game. I have not gotten there yet. I'm not looking into anything, not getting any spoilers. Um, my plan is to go back to this uh, after I finish up this next game, um, which, hey, if you're interested in... There's... I watched somebody play the first two hours of it or so um, because I don't have the money to be buying new games right now. Um, yeah. And it looks good. It's definitely the type of game I would play. And you're right, it's like Metroidvania, but without the combat. Yeah. You're kind of avoiding combat, more or less. Which I'm a big fan of, anyway. That's why I don't You like... do have, like, hearts, so you can get hit multiple times. It's not like you get hit one time and you're dead, but, uh, it's more of a, definitely more of a Pothlevania than, a, like, a shooter. Mm hmm Um, which is where I kind of, even when it comes to Metroidvanias, the more puzzle-heavy ones, the ones that kind of stray away from the combat i like more like headlander headlander is the one puzzles of those are ones. cool like there's Love like it. water puzzles that i saw that were neat and don't talk like about too much like again i don't want spoilers hidden <laughs> switches i'll just say that i have i i did get the um the yo-yo which is like you can use it to hit switches that are out of your range you, you can also like break that. rocks with the yeah yo -yo. so spikes that would normally hurt you you can break. Yeah, it's a really cool idea. Um, Which is, like, cool because you can uncover certain areas that are hidden behind spikes. Just yeah, you go under. I think there's, like, holes under some of the spikes and all that. Oh, excuse me. Um, this episode's not downloading. <laughs> no cedars. Sorry, go ahead. You're good. I can cut around. Will I? I don't know. It depends on how much no. I'm edit this. Hey, I do cut around a lot, okay? <laughs> uh, I have also been playing Chance Bush of Sid. I'm going to fucking murder you. <laughs> I'm just you. kidding. I'm just kidding. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> like those things. I cut those things when I say I want to murder you. Because um, I'm already <laughs> on a list. I don't need to be on another. Um, no fly. I've been playing Chance of Sinar, which just got added to... Uh, chance, chance of Sinar? Chance, or, as in, ch like, you like, saying words, not like hymn a chance of the cue. faith, like a chant. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Not like a chance at. No. Uh, it is on Game it's Pass again. currently. Sorry. Yeah. They <laughs> added it to Game Pass last week. Um, I oh, yeah, think... I saw the YouTube video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I played a good, a little bit, uh, probably like the first chapter, maybe. Um, we currently have a uh one episode of a let's play up on the youtube channel uh part two will come out next week um and hopefully the rest of it will come out which means i'm trying to force myself to continue playing the games because i'm horrible at doing that um but i highly i highly love it highly recommend it very fun uh language based puzzle game basically right. um you are basically you are learning in deciphering languages to finish puzzles and get through this world um, that I'm not sure if you just woke up in another world, uh, cause it looks like there are three different dialects that you eventually, uh, learn. Um, 
which makes me feel like there's only three chapters because I already finished one dialogue. Got the one chapter, two chapter, three, right? Yeah. Um, really fun, really colorful world. Uh, a lot of like yellow, orange, red kind of thing. Um, I uh, I really want to just get back to it. I keep meaning to, and I just have not gotten a chance to yet. Um, but it, it it plays into that like kind of trial and error where like oh, okay this guy did this thing i'm doing this with him that that word that he said to me must mean this and then something else happens that he says that same word again and i'm like oh that isn't this word that means something else um or you'll find like a statue and it's a statue of a mouth open with a, a giant head speaking basically to all these people so you're like oh this symbol means speaks means to talk. Yeah. yeah um and it's cool. I like the way that they do it. Instead of it being like, all right, we don't ever tell you if you got it wrong. <laughs> there are basically like little word checks where it's like, okay, you've hit a point in the story. Put the thing, put the symbols in the right spot. Put, you know that this word means this, put it here. Right. This we'll means guarantee. water. Yeah. This means whatever. Yeah, yeah. It kind of like verifies what the verifies the language for you. Um, yeah. Really cool. Uh, really cool idea. And like I said, it's on Game Pass, so uh, I'll be honest. I'll check it out. If I had played this last year, it probably would have been probably up for my personal game of the year. Like the oh wow, you like it that much? It's that fucking good, dude. Um, personally, but I also like very different games from you. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but it just scratches that itch. Yeah, it just it does it so well. Um, and the other game that I have look like. played, the, gamer God, score. oh God, I don't even know. Twenty-five achievements, estimated completion takes eight hours. Hmm. That's not too bad um, for a puzzle story game kind of kind of thing. Um, of the three games that I have on here that I played, though, uh, the most time I put into, and I've now finished it, or I've beaten it. I still have a handful of things that I have to go and collect and finish in the world. Um, Little Kitty Big City. Little Kitty Big City is on Game Pass. Little Kitty Big City is just you as a cat who fell out of your perch, your little window perch at the top of this like apartment complex building. And you have to get the stamina and all help these other animals out to get yourself back to your little window perch. (laughs) Little Kitty Big City claws its way to 1 million Game Pass players. It is. Such a cute fucking fun game. Um, Little Kitty Big City is like, if somebody saw Stray and was like, let's take out all of the sad bits. All of the sad parts and and just make it a fun cat game. Let's make it a fun cat game where you catch birds, but you specifically catch and release. If I (laughs) fit, I sit and enjoy five cardboard boxes as an achievement. That's pretty funny. You get an achievement for that. Uh, There's an achievement for knocking over like 20 pedestrians. Uh, (laughs) There's an achievement for throw or jumping on top of a pedestrian. Um... Trying to Knock think. Knock a human over by jumping oh, on them. Uh, make one of them slip on or fall over a banana peel. Make 20 humans stumble. Make them slip on a banana. Yep. Leave your paw prints in wet concrete. That's yep. Cool. Yeah. There you go. Um, it's so Knock fun. all the chess pieces off the board. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, cat shit. Yeah. <laughs> um, this this Secret, one's definitely put more. Put four about. rubber ducks in the pond. That one is a lot more time consuming. Secret. I guess they're ducks spread out throughout the map yeah throughout the map the first one you find it's so one of the main missions of the game is you have to find and rescue four of the ducklings and when you bring those ducklings back ducklings back they go into the pond oh it's literally just top down isometric and you're a cat well not really isometric running around cat pov yeah yeah i was gonna say it's like third person cat um but yeah, you uh, you when you collect them and bring them back, all the ducks back, you notice that there's a little rubber ducky outside of the pond. So obviously, your uh, your first inclination is let me just toss this in here with the ducks, and then it's like one of four. I'm like, ah, shit! Now I gotta go searching. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it a whole looks bunch cool. of hats I, too. I will play that little kitty game. Yeah. Um, be careful. Uh, I got trapped after playing trapped. yep after playing the majority of the game and in like i was about to get to the point where it's like all right and now i'm gonna scale up 
and not really point of no return. It was more of I had the ability to go where I needed to, but I decided to just fuck around in one area, and it ended up putting me in a ventilation system that doesn't exist. Um, so in the place that it was, it's attached to the little convenience grocery store kind of thing. And in the grocery store, there is a vent that goes from one part of the map to among us to yourself. Um, <laughs> kind of, uh, you but you, you go stuck. through part of the vent and you come out another side into the bathroom. I think when they were building the game, they put a second vent um, kind of like as a layout kind of thing, because it is directly below where the other vent is, uh, but it doesn't have the exits. It's just a closed off vent. So my so my there? cat just got stuck, and I'm like, I am 98% done this fucking game. <laughs> All you had to do was climb back in the air. All house I had to do was fucking... climb back, yeah. All I had to do was climb back. Uh, and you were like, what's this thing I haven't checked out yet? You ain't stuck. <laughs> yep. It happens. Whatever. That's, I, uh, that's no good. I, I, I got there eventually. Or I fixed it eventually. I'm good Ooh. now. I've now beaten the game. Uh, really fun. Obviously another Game Pass game, so why not hop on and yeah, do Yeah, I'll check them both out. They're installing right now. Oh, nice. There you go. Um, do you play anything else? Anything new? Or are you still just played... on your Hearthstone grind? I'm... I replayed some Diablo 4 um, because it's on Game Pass now. Season 4 just dropped. Haven't made a new character yet to try the new season stuff, but I jumped back on my old character just to give it a try. Did a couple dungeons, ran through. I found the pit, which is like a new end game type of uh, dungeon mechanic hmm. where it's just giving you more end game stuff to do, basically. Um, so far, from what I've seen, I really liked it. My character still plays the same. I didn't have to like respec, which is nice. But now all my gear is tagged as like legacy gear, meaning like I can't yeah. modify it or get rid of. I can't mess with it with any of the new systems, which is fine. I understand that because it's like an eternal character, so they don't want to have my character that's been around for a year like breaking the game's mm. old stuff that was overpowered or whatever stuff they changed. So I haven't got a full grasp on everything they've changed because it's been so long since I played. But I I sat, I sat down and played it for two hours, plugged my controller in, played it on PC. I liked it. Right. Hearthstone has been keeping me busy. I've been playing Constructed. Um, I'm probably going to hit Legend. I don't know. I'm at rank 4, uh, and the ranks go reverse 10 through 1, and there's like bronze, silver, gold, diamond, platinum. And I'm platinum 4. I'm like 4 ranks oh, away damn. from Legend. Okay. So, yeah, it, does, it wouldn't require a lot, but I don't know if I'm going to hit it. But I've hit it the last two months in a row, and the seasons are one month long each. So the last two competitive seasons, I've hit Legend both of them. Um, just playing constructed and playing different decks too. Playing uh, different classes, classes I hadn't played a lot before. I played a lot of hunter the first time, and I played a lot of demon hunter the second time. This time I've been playing a lot of mage, a lot of mage. Um, but that's just constructed. It doesn't change too much. It, it did change a lot this month because they nerfed warrior finally because warrior was so overpowered for the longest time. Um, but. I'm like a mid-range type of player. If you're not familiar with card games, there's like aggro decks where it's like you try to dump your hand by like turn four or five and you play a bunch of low-cost things that maybe on their own are not that powerful, but you snowball early. Mm -hmm. If your opponent doesn't have an answer or board clear, something to soak up that early damage and they just get snowballed, they lose. But if they have the board clear, most of the time you lose. That's how aggro is. It's all in and the games are quick. They're like three or four minutes because you're like snowball, 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 and then your opponent's like fireball and you're like, fuck, I lose. <laughs> Mid-range is kind of the opposite. Mid-range has good early game, good middle game, and maybe one or two quote-unquote finishers, but even their finishers aren't like 10 cost top of the spectrum stuff. It's like 7, 8 drop stuff usually. That's where I like to be because mid-range has this kind of moment in every game where you have to decide how the game is going to go because some mid-range decks can generate cards, can generate value, can reach the end game and like go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a control player. But sometimes if your opponent is playing control, which is the third type of deck, they're all in on late game. More than half their deck is late game or oriented, late game focused. So sometimes on like turn six or seven, I'll be playing mage and I'm like, okay, I have a lot of burn, but not enough to kill my opponent. But I have more in my deck. I can discover cards. I can create cards. Mm -hmm. That's the way Hearthstone works because it's a digital card game. Maybe as an out, as a, a way out, I can do enough damage to hit him in the face. Sometimes it's even like, do I ignore his board, which then will allow him to possibly kill me and, and just, just go, go straight all for face. His face. Yeah. Yeah. So you put yourself on the clock sometimes. You go, okay, I have enough burn 
that I can kill him in two turns, but I don't have enough mana, because maybe I only have seven this turn and, like, eight next turn, but I have, like, ten mana worth of burn spells. So it's like, do I just send it all face and hope he doesn't heal, or do I fight for the board? Like, yeah. those kind of decisions are why I, I like playing the game. So mid-range, in my opinion, and I'm talking about this for nobody, but nobody's listening to our hustle talk, but uh, I like it. It's the best the game's felt to me in a very long time. That's the good. other thing, though, that I've been playing a lot of, not just constructed, is Battlegrounds. Battlegrounds is, is their chess yeah. auto battler. I probably put in the Battlegrounds duos came out about a month ago. Uh, this week, I probably put in twelve hours. Jesus, okay. last seven days, last seven days. Yeah, and it's not all at once. It's not like I played for twelve hours at a time, but like two or three hours here, two or three hours here, two or three hours here. Um, it's fun, but duos is so different because you're playing with another person. So if you're not, like, talking, communicating in comms with, like, somebody that you can trust to, like, yeah. send you stuff and you send them stuff and, like, you're talking. I've made uh, a friendship, an online friendship with this dude. His name's Ravi, and he lives in New York. And he's playing on his phone, like, on breaks from work. <laughs> and he's working for the state of New York uh, for, like, the Transit Authority or whatever. Jesus. And he's, like, message me on Discord. And he's like, hey, bro, I got, you know, I got 90-minute lunch break. He's like, let's play some games. I'm like, all right, let's go. <laughs> And for whatever reason, me and him have been, like, nonstop steady climbing. I think we've played, like, probably in the last three weeks, we've probably played together for, like, 20 hours total. And I don't think we've gotten a fourth place finish, but maybe, like, twice. And there's only one, two, three, and four. So as long as you get first or second, you're climbing in the ranks in the MMR. If you get third, you lose a little bit. If you get fourth, you lose a lot. I think we got fourth place, like, twice in hmm. three weeks. Jesus. He's just a good dude. And he even told me yesterday, he's like, hey, man, like, I don't even like playing with other other people no more. He's like, oh, fuck these randoms. He's you, like, if I'm gonna guys, play, I'm gonna play solos. We, do you we guys play on, on... voice chat or is it just? Yeah, we we voice chat on Discord. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> uh, I'm just like, yeah, me I know on Discord. You had, play, you had been kind of. He calls out me on Discord. He puts it on speaker and then he launches Hearthstone on his phone. Oh wow. Yeah. Jesus. Ooh. I love it. He's a cool dude, though. Cool you, dude. you, you. I think you're most dedicated, and I don't think it's on purpose. Your most dedicated video game uh, publisher, I think, might just be Blizzard for you, because yeah. like the most time you spend in games has been with either World of Warcraft or World of Warcraft, Hearthstone. So. And, and now you know, even you can throw Call of Duty for a little bit. You can throw Call of Duty in the mix, though. Oh, that's true. I forgot. But when I mean, when was the last time you played a Call of Duty game? It's been a while. Yeah. I just downloaded X Defiant because I wanted to try it out, but I had to download Ubisoft Connect. And I had to like Yeah, it's so frustrating. It's such a hassle. Just yeah. make it and a then one by the time, thing. And then I had to like recover my Ubisoft password, which I couldn't find. I had to log into like an old Yahoo email from ten years ago. Yeah. I finally got it installed and then I didn't feel like playing. <laughs> so <laughs> It's okay. Uh from what I've heard, it has Ubisoft been having Connect some hassle. uh matchmaking issues anyway. Uh people, I watched people um, seem to enjoy Zero. It. I watched Boys, Boys Critical, Penguin Zero. I watched him play for like two hours. Yeah. I think he had like a bounty or like a sponsored stream. But uh, it looked looked cool, and I wanted to try it out because, I mean, I was raised on shooters. Yeah. I think I've lost a step when it comes to shooters. I'm like the retired NFL athlete who's like 34 years old and can't run as fast as Still he talks about the good old. old days, yeah. Yeah, I remember, <laughs> I remember dropping 25 on, on D-Dust back in the day. And then Dust 2 came out. Oh, I remember Dust 2. Oh, Jesus. Um, oddly enough, speaking, yes, it's not on my list. Um, but speaking of X Defiant, uh, no, not speaking of X Defiant. Sorry, speaking of Critical, Moist Critical. Um, he actually put out a speed running bounty for. I saw that. Yeah, for, for not or another crab's treasure. Um, I think he's doing like a. There's like a charity event for yeah. Ludwig. I think he's doing like a speedrunning event too. Something fast fifty. Something I think something like that. But um, where it's like fifty hours long and it's like a speedrunning like games done quick style marathon, but not yeah. quite in the same vein. Um, but I was gonna say I saw that. I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, but even more cool on top of that is that uh, the developers Agrocrag came out and said, "Hey, we'll put another extra five thousand. We'll if, put in in the pot if if you specifically restrict it um, to the the a certain category for the speed running like glitchless um, or yeah, yeah. it's kind of I think they're okay with certain glitches but there is currently a glitch that they, NMJ they NMG can't, no major glitches yeah I was gonna say there's currently a glitch that won't be pitched patched out 
until after the speed run is done for two reasons one because the speed run community whatever uh but also they're taking the week off they're not doing any patches this week they took off like a holiday week they're um, just gonna watch watch the event no not even that just they i think the company was like hey we've released we've been successful let's take yeah, some time take a break um so it's basically a glitch that allows you to fly up into and skip massive parts of the map which is like you know easy easy speed running kind of stuff right it's out of bounds so basically they're, they're going to yeah. do a, a bounty for a and no out of bounds right? yeah uh and it's funny because part of the reasoning behind it um if you look into it uh there is like dishonored dishonored is some crazy oh God, out of bounds. such weird out of bounds stuff um that yeah. in portal portal out of bounds shit is they're crazy they're like climbing on the tops of fences that are like a thousand feet tall but yeah. the actual fence is only you know like the the opening cutscene where the empress or the em, yeah the empress gets killed, you get to watch from like a bird's eye view. Spoilers. The and, yeah, the first twelve minutes of the game. Sorry, um, and yeah, I say twelve minutes because if you play, and you're it, like in a, in another zip code yeah. on top of like the the boat checkpoint. Like you're like oh I see it over there. Uh, something um, happened over there. Part of the reason why that the they have put this forward though is the current speed running champion or the current number one for uh world record speed run is held by in both categories is held by the same person so they're oh, like cool. we don't need the the super crazy glitch one just do the regular one and we know that it's okay because this guy did both of them <laughs> right. um which is yeah, just a cute idea uh but anyway we're scoring little kitty big city you did play that a lot I did, yeah. Um, skip it. Thirty-four over. and a half hours, bro. Oh, I Xbox Xbox dimed you out. Oh, I left it on overnight. <laughs> yeah, okay. I left it. I just left, left it, it running so long. Um, I was like, I was looking and comparing. Sorry, it's like less. I than didn't an know hour. that it showed the hours. That's funny. That it that is on, most it does games on the um, Xbox. That is the, most uh, games app. for me because I just let things sit on my computer open. That's why uh, Graveyard Keeper is still my number one most played game on Steam. Left on in the background I for a week. I didn't turn it off for like a week. Um, maybe like a tenth of those hours was me actually playing. Um, anyway, moving on to the actual moving quick news. No, nothing really. We have some big-ish news. Um, but like going through the quick quick stuff uh we before recording brought up multiverses multiverses is coming back uh this Being re-released yeah two days. this tuesday tuesday um it's gonna be out by the time you hear this <sighs> shut up you i might edit this earlier <laughs> it'll um, be out by the time it'll be out tuesday uh, <laughs> um but multiverses is back uh some of the added characters that have been announced is the joker Still voiced for this will be the final Mark thing Mark Hamill voices of the Joker, uh, because as he has stated before, he's no longer going to voice the Joker without his, his Batman. No, he's not doing it because of Kevin Conroy passing. Um, uh, yeah, so the last project that Kevin Conroy so did, he's, he's like retired from the Joker. Yeah, yeah, he's retiring, and this is the last thing that Kevin Conroy technically did. If you don't count that stupid ass Suicide Squad game, um. But we're getting the Joker, we're getting Agent Smith from The Matrix, we are getting Jason Voorhees from the Friday the 13th movies, uh, but in in the most subtle, not really mentioned news, I don't know if it was a character reveal earlier, but th there's like no attention being given to it, uh, the Banana Guard from Adventure Time is being added as a character. <laughs> uh, banana Guards, if you don't know, are the super stupid guards for the candy kingdom that all kind of sound like this uh, <laughs> uh i'm i don't know why i love it i'm perfectly fine with it and i support it um we got news that square annex i always want to say squaresoft they are not squaresoft square, they haven't square, been squaresoft Enix. in a long time uh square is moving away from console exclusivity uh that will hopefully mean no more Man, I like the old Squaresoft logo, though. Oh, yeah, it was cool. Um, cooler, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, Square's moving away from console exclusivity. Uh, they have noticed that, th you know, maybe focusing on a single console, not letting them sell as well as they want to. Um, especially... Honestly, I don't think consoles are going to be around much longer. 
I, I for think... one exclusivity, one hundred percent. I don't think is going to last as long. I Nintendo, Nintendo will fight the longest, and I am perfectly fine with them holding on to it. <laughs> I'll, I think I'll buy a Nintendo will console. Probably still be around for a while. Mm-hmm. But if you're gonna try and now decide between Xbox and PlayStation, just get a PC. It's, like, it, what 100%. are you doing? At this point, every game that Xbox makes is already coming to PC day and date. PlayStation is just a little bit longer of a wait. That's yeah, really they, the difference right now. They put they put exclusivity time exclusivity on them, yeah. but eventually the good stuff will make its way. And who knows how that'll change after how successful day and date launch for Helldivers was. Right. Um, and I mean Diver, that even though it has some, had some controversy, but the launch was successful. It was huge. So I have that on here. We can break through that. Oh no! Wait, hold on. That's part of the other thing. We'll get to that later. Um, we got confirmation. Admittedly, Nate and you probably have played more Helldivers than me. So. I have not played any of it, so no. Um, well, the Nate, Nate I, I love the original Helldivers. I played a lot of the original Helldivers. Um, oh, uh, officially, we have confirmation, even though we already fucking knew, that the next Call of Duty will be Black Ops 6. Um, we will know more during Key 3. And yes, that is the joke title we are calling... The time that E3 used to be, but now Jeff Keighley's in charge, so it's Key 3. <laughs> um, Call of Duty is definitely, maybe, coming to Game Pass. And hey, who would have guessed, two days after recording this, uh, Xbox did announce that coming to Game Pass, day and date, Call of Duty Black Ops 6. Happens. We knew it was coming. Uh, nice to get a confirmation before the big event in the following weeks. But uh, all that means really is, hey, now are they going to give us more updates about Game Pass changing pricing? Currently, it seems like it's sticking around what it, it is set as with all the different tiers. Uh, but who knows if that is a just for now kind of thing. Whatever, moving on. I'm going to do some time warp fun stuff in the podcast now. Valve has a new game that... They are not acknowledging yet, even though uh, there seem to be a shit ton of leaks. Um, let me pull up the actual article, say some stuff about it. Uh, Deadlock is widely rumored to be Valve's next title, a third-person hero-based shooter rooted in a multiplayer-focused, lore-rich universe. In recent weeks, we've seen more than 100 leaks hit social media and content-sharing platforms worldwide, with the quality of said of said leaks improving over time from full fe- full fledged gameplay edits to walkthroughs of the character library. Um, these are still up. You can like easily find this content. Zip lines yeah, like, very, like uh, uh, fuck, what's that game that I love? The thing is, though, any kind of game with that kind of like movement stuff, you're always exposed when you take the zip lines. So somebody's gonna shoot, 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 jump up there. Um, but when they say hundred hundreds of leaks. 100 percent look this stuff up there's content everywhere you can see this game um someone said team fortress 3 no deadlock valve can't count the three yeah they can't count the three um we'll get deadlock 2 before we get another a three game uh but it's just six, six v six interesting third person character shooter yeah yeah it's interesting that we have this much footage of this game supposedly it is currently in alpha they are testing it with people um but they have not acknowledged it in any way whatsoever. Uh, which just is, I feel like it's just an, a weird thing for them to do, to try. Did your light just die? Oh, no. No, we're good. Okay. Right. Um, I think, um, actually, I, I do have a light. Never mind. Don't turn it on now. Yeah, yeah. Continuity. Wash, wash everything uh, up. <laughs> um, it's just, it really is just to me, that is an interesting thing. I feel like. I don't know if they really have commented on leaks in the past, because I'm sure there have been. I mean... Yeah, I don't think they, no one is ever going to confirm a leak unless they're about to announce it. But it just seems like so much. Uh, who knows? Maybe they... I mean, GTA 6 got leaked two years ago. Like, it happens. Oh, yeah, but they came out and immediately were like, copyright strike, closing that down. Yeah, oh, yeah, yes, that was real. Person. It was an early early version of the game, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I remember the people got mad at that, too. Yeah, um... Who knows, maybe the reason why they aren't saying anything is because within the next month, during Key 3, yay, uh, we'll hear something. Yeah, they could just YOLO it, just surprise launch. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't soft, know about surprise launch, launch, but at least... Soft launch it. Maybe like, hey, open beta kind of thing. Yeah. Um, all right, well, that is all the quick news. The last two things I have 
we hinted a little bit at earlier today. Um, I wrote them down just for fun as uh, Xbox says, hold my beer and decides to beat PlayStation for shittiest news of the month. Obviously, earlier this month, uh, PlayStation, after having incredible success with Helldivers 2, came out and said that, hey, moving forward, we are going to require PSN logins. Now, that is not something that was that fully came out of nowhere. It was intended to be there from the beginning, but it wasn't implemented correctly. So they held off on it and just let people play the game. Um, when they finally came back and said, Hey, here we go. Let's do this. Uh, over a hundred countries would have immediately been unable to play uh, Helldivers 2 because PlayStation Network is not available, not in, those available in those countries. So those are people that had access to and may have already purchased and definitely definitely had purchased that game that were fully just, hey, you've had this for less than a month. We've had this for two months. I don't know how much time it's been. Um, but now you can't do it anymore. Ha ha, fuck you. Um, after a lot of public outcry from the developer and the fans... Uh, including the community, one of the community managers telling people to uh, review bomb the game to hopefully get PlayStation to reverse course, uh, which you know not the best idea, but whatever it I guess worked. Uh, PlayStation did Doesn't back always off. Work. Yeah, PlayStation did back off. They said, "Hey, we're not going to do this. We'll be fine." Um, now, of course, they then said that, "Hey, you." still need it to play the multiplayer side of Ghost of Tsushima, which has now been ported over to PC and Steam. Um, but it's only the multiplayer side. You can still play the single player. That is still just a little shitty. Uh, come on, PlayStation, figure something else out. Maybe either don't require PSN login or put PSN in other countries. I don't know what's holding back that kind of thing. Maybe it's an actual like international bullshit kind of thing, but... Uh, um, but because, you know, Xbox does, it, Xbox might be getting their ass handed to them in console sales. They want to at least hold some kind of first place trophy. Uh, as you mentioned, they closed down four studios. Uh, <laughs> and a little bit of it is Bethesda's fault. Uh, I mean, if, if you read between the lines, there's still where I'm coming from. Yes. Bethesda sold to Microsoft. This was you know, last year, two years ago, because they were losing money like on publishing. Ago. Yeah, four years ago. It was, literally, it, it was literally, I think, 2020. But Bethesda was was had a bunch of sub-studios working on games. And then when Microsoft took over, they released those games, but they didn't do any quality checks. They didn't do their due diligence. They just released them. So it's a little bit on Bethesda, because they kind of bundled their, their entire company together and said, here you go. Mm -hmm. But... They, you know, they said, yeah, all our ducks in a row, and then Microsoft didn't check, and then we get stuff like Redfall. Um, it sucks. The biggest loss to me was the, it wasn't it Tango, where they the ones yeah. to be high So, rush? all together, uh, we have um, Arcane, Arcane Austin. Austin, Tango Gameworks, Alpha Dog Studios, which worked on the Mobile Doom game, uh, as well as Roundhouse Games, which is being absorbed Evil into Cinemax. Him. Didn't Roundhouse make Evil Within? Uh, no, uh, Tango Gameworks made in Evil Within. Tango, Tango well. Gameworks gotcha. made Evil Within, uh, Ghostwire Tokyo, and most recently and most successfully, maybe not most successfully as in like comparison to, but like very well received. Uh, yes, was Hi-Fi Rush. Um, yeah, that's that's the most annoying, most upsetting thing to me is that that game kind of like basically just soft launched yellow launched on like an e3 yeah. announcement did so well and then for that vp of marketing to be like hi-fi rush is a breakout hit for us mm -hmm. and we're so we couldn't be happier with tango game works and then your reward is good luck on the yeah. unemployment line um on You're top fired. of that uh there were reports from a a uh meeting internal kind of meeting the next day where they said that they wanted to focus on smaller, more prestige games uh, right after closing down the studio that made a smaller and one of their most prestige games. Um, <laughs> now, I will say, yes, I understand what you're saying about Redfall. Redfall, Redfall yeah, was, a big, was a big step back. Redfall is a whole lot of issues that 
even yeah, but the team when it happened. Well, that was the thing. The team that started the game isn't the team that finished it, the game. The and team they also didn't want to do the, the game. game. Yeah, the yeah. team came to, after the purchase, came to Xbox, told Xbox, this is what we have, this is what how we feel, let us and do something they else. they send somebody in to clean it up? No, they did nothing. Xbox basically was like, hands off, you'll be fine. And Phil Spencer even had come out after Redfall had its very horrible launch um came out and said we we fucked up we should moving forward we need to have a more hands-on approach with these studios kind of thing a little bit of this is also due to like an incoming recession which i don't want to be like doom and gloom but like if you've like watched like a little bit of world news like within the next six months like we're like the entire United States is like using up all of its credit. People aren't like buying. Like there's people that aren't investing as much. I think a recession is definitely on the horizon. We don't. And Microsoft have any money. as a giant monopoly who have absorbed all of their competition mm-hmm. needs to shut down some of their underperforming things before yeah. the recession, so they don't take a bigger hit later. And they that basically is... tried to make it seem like, hey, the reason why we did this was uh, to you know fix redundancies and and. Uh... No, put they're, ourselves, they're getting, put ourselves they're in a getting better ahead state of the economic forward. news. Yeah, yeah, but instead of fixing the problem, they're just cutting their losses. Uh, at the same time, though, Activision did just open up a new studio, um, which, you know, makes perfect sense after you just shut down four other studios in your other arm. They're, well, a good news, good news for that is that, again, legally, they just uh, had a big landmark case uh, in court where... Uh, non-competes are not illegal in, in the United States. Yeah. Any existing non-competes, I think, are good until the end of this year. And then starting next year, 2025, you can no longer make someone, anyone, yeah. sign a non-compete. So that was a big deal for game developers. Because like, if you work for Amazon Game Studios or Microsoft Game Studios or Bethesda or, or Sony, almost certainly you have like a six-month non-compete, sometimes up to a year non-compete, where you're not allowed to work with any competitors in the space. Mm-hmm. So that limits your job options. Also, if you're in a shitty situation, if you're being underpaid, if you're being over crunched, if you're being overworked and you're not getting, you know, fair treatment, you can't just up and leave because you have to wait a whole six months before you can work anywhere else. That's why a bunch of people would just go indie and make their own thing, because if you have something of your own, if you can sustain yourself, then they can't not compete you for building your own studio. Mm. Um, but you can't work for competitors. So, so that's another that's another good thing for games. The non-competes are going away. Yeah. Uh, just in general, which is great for everybody, to be fair. Um, yeah. Because then everybody... The semi, in, in any way, employee, silver lining uh, for these devs, uh, the they news. are... They are finishing up, like, their final updates that they were working on. Um, Tango is finishing up, like, a last patch or add-on. Redfall. But it's because people bought uh, deluxe editions of the game. Yeah, they there's certain things they had that are, yeah. They have to, uh, they're contractually obligated to deliver some DLC. Redfall is getting good. Redfall is getting an, uh, an offline mode so you can play fully standalone. Um, there was another part to it. I can't remember. Yeah, we, were work- we, we are... Working to release our final update, game update four, that brings revamped neighborhood and nest systems, single player pausing, offline mode, and more. We'll provide details soon. Thank you all. Um, it sucks because that was, to me, Redfall is uh, is upsetting because it is made by a studio that I I loved. I I mean I still love Arcane. Arcane. Um, the second studio when i saw like the launch trailer for redfall i like put in days off at work for the yeah release. we all were excited for that um and then like a month before the release date they put out some more footage and i'm just like i think i'll <laughs> like i can I work take again. those days back yeah <laughs> um yeah it, it is a days. game it when they announced it we were all super excited seeing what it became you could really tell that nobody wanted anything to do with this game yeah they kind of over promised and under delivered and by overpromise, I'm going to go with the people that are in charge of making money and selling the game. We're like, look at what this game is going to be. And the people making it the game, we're like, we can't get it to be that. We don't want to. Why work are on you this. telling people this? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, which sucks. Uh, I hope they all find something very soon. Um, I hope it's one of these many indie studios that keeps the all these things popping up from all these older. Yeah, it swallows uh, big them up. names swallow them up. Yeah, um, yeah. But hey, on top of ugh, let's let's our last uh, annoying 
big corporations like this throw around their money and do whatever the fuck with the lives of people that uh, actually are the reason why they make any money. Uh, IGN, everyone's favorite uh, gaming news and entertainment news site. Um, I'm actually not being upset with the actual site and the people that write for the site. I have no problem with that. Uh, but IGN themselves uh, bought out the entirety of Gamer Network's brands. Uh, which includes Eurogamer, GameIndustry.biz, Rock, Paper, Shotgun, and VG247. Uh, 24-7. I don't know why I said 247. Um, as well as that includes shares of Outside Xbox, Digital Foundry, Nintendo Life, Push Square, and Pure Xbox. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, that basically is bringing all these international companies into the fold. Uh, but almost immediately... Uh, as it's said here, the move has already resulted in significant, quote-unquote, redundancy layoffs of acclaimed journalists across the brands or as, they, as they are absorbed into the mega site. Um, this is the downside to people saying, let me buy more people, more and more companies. Let's put all these companies together. Oh, we don't need all of you. We just want the name recognition, uh, which fucking sucks. Yeah. It's no, no good. Yeah. But, I mean, sometimes that results in something like uh, Giant Bomb, which I believe Giant Bomb came up from the ashes of other studios that got shut down. Same thing as Easy, Al Easy Allies. E Easy Allies exists because they lost their positions or their company was going down. Um, or even, hell, even just kind of funny, which was people that worked at IGN and said, you know what, we're going to fucking do this on our own. And they have, and they've been successful. And they are a 11-person independent group that is making it work. Right. Uh, yeah. It's just upsetting. I want... Really, the... the I want to start my own game studio. The, Blackjack. The, okay. theme, the theme of this podcast is just going to be uh, fuck capitalism. Fuck. Fuck billionaires. Um, yeah, that's true. And fuck the American government. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Fuck them all. Fuck them all. Fuck them all. All right. Anything else you want to talk about? I got one thing, Dave. What you got? It's important news. Probably not that important because you're laughing. Wendy's will now sell you a 50 nugget bucket. That's right. They are nugget they bucket. are rebranding the nugget family, the family pack size nugget. This and is putting it in news. an actual nugget bucket. Um... It's a nugget bucket. Nugget bucket. It's it's Fuck yeah. yeah called the Nugs Why is this Party Pack. The Nugs Party Pack. Uh, as now long as I can still get spicy. Then well, yeah. that's the thing. It, now, are you worried about whether or not you can find it? Well, good for you. There's a website specifically to track which which Wendy's sell the Wendy's Nug Party. Nugparty.com. Wendy's Nugparty.com. And guess what? The ones by us does. Do the Nug Party back. I was going to say, I'm, I'm looking at pictures of Nuggets. <laughs> I, I I wanted to keep this one on here. I put this on here because I knew we were going to add on the more like upsetting and depressing news. But I'm like, but Nuggets. <laughs> so goofy. Now, one of my favorite things. Uh, hey, stop saying things out loud, Dave. <laughs> do not dox us by Wendy's. <laughs> The names of towns. Uh huh. I'll just blur that out. Bleep that it's out. The internet. Um. <laughs> Wendy's Nug Partner dot com. It's partnership with Rashik Zahid, the guy who created the website that tracks whether McDonald's ice cream machines are broken. <laughs> That's a genius. Mickbroken dot com. Yep. And they have green lights and uh, red lights. That's hilarious. Oh God. Um. Now, so one of the things is uh, prices is vary. Prices vary depending on where you live, but you can grab 50 yeah, like nuggets 15 bucks. in a 15 bucket bucks at participating. Yeah, Wendy's between 12 and $15. I mean, um, that's the American dream right there. 50 nuggets, $15. My favorite thing is they legally, they did say, Wendy says that in reality, the buckets can contain as little as 45 nuggets. Because <laughs> horrible, embarrassing. Hopefully we can all manage through this dark chapter of American history. <laughs> Uh, but then in, in uh, approximately 50 nuggets up, um, in brackets it says please don't count your nuggets in your bucket and get angry at the overworked Wendy's employee please <laughs> people are going to do that people are 
You did. No, I'm down. Not at the person, but when you got that one bucket and it was less than 50, oh, you're like, yeah. what the fuck? It's <laughs> because I took all those extra napkins. They saw me. <laughs> They're like, are you going to take 700 napkins and you get four less nuggets? That's fair. Um, yeah, Balance. it's a great deal. Uh, you know, in this in these trying times where yeah, food is more and more expensive. Nuggets. Yeah, why pay $15 for 20 nuggets, inferior nuggets, 12 bucks for twelve ninety nine at McDonald's or wherever the fuck? Yeah. 50 spicy nugs from Wendy's and like a dozen sauces, 15 bucks. Let's see, how much is a... Tw- Very reasonable. Let's look at what pricing is. Okay, 40 piece. 40 piece of nuggets at... T- what the fuck, why can't I... Oh. So 40 McNuggets, according to Grubhub, is $15. Um, Ooh, interesting. Yeah, and like you said, inf- they are the uh, inferior nugget. Um, yeah, they're not spicy. 50 spicy nugs, $15. Can't beat it. Even if it isn't spicy, it's just the, the nuggets just are better. Regular nuggets from them are better. Usually, yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Nugget news. Nugget news over. News um, nugget. We're going to... I don't think you have... You don't have any uh, no context recommendation this week, do you? Uh, it's probably for an edible. No? Okay, we'll just skip. It's pot again. Um... <laughs> In that they're case, brownie bites. They're brownie they're bites. Made by, they're made by Bubby's Baked. Bubby's bites. Baked? Who would have guessed? Bubby's Baked. <laughs> All right. In that case, thank you for joining us on another episode of Space Time Taco. As always, if you like what you see, what you hear, what we do, <laughs> follow us on all the social media. Just search Space Time Taco. You can find me everywhere at Time Lord Brito. You can find him everywhere at Darth Dave 89 basically you know if you want to find him you can find him if you don't want to find him you can find him you will never uh, if you want to help support us rate and review this podcast join us on patreon to access unedited content spoiler casts and more follow us message on me YouTube. if you want to play hearthstone duos oh yeah message him he's are you what is the can you find there's an, M- there's an mmr there's like a ranking system if you win your rank goes up and it shows you as darth dave 89 right Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, Start cool. David United hashtag fourteen thirty on Blizzard. I fucking hate that system. Uh, follow us on YouTube. Subscribe fourteen seventy. Subscribe on Twitch. And remember, if you have Amazon Prime, you have Twitch Prime, which gives you one free subscription every month. So why not make it us? Uh, yeah. There you go. We love you. Thank you. Go inside and play video game. Peace. Peace.